What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a video I am just excited about. Every single video these days I am completely buzzing about. As you can see, I am down at Aston Martin Amersham, part of the Stratstone Group, and this is my local Aston Martin dealership. So I'm down here in Amersham to pick up a car that you may have seen over social media uh, for the weekend. I've got a 300 mile limit on this car, so I'm gonna really put it to the test on what this car is like as a GT car, but also what it is like as the baby Aston with the 5.9 litre V12 in it. I'm not here to pick up a Vanquish. I'm not here to pick up a DB9. I'm in fact here to pick up the brand new 2016 Aston Martin Vantage V12S. 565 brake horsepower, 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds. And the car that I'm gonna be picking up here is the most beautiful spec I have ever seen on a V12 Vantage S. It is ticked every single box. So let's go check it out, jump in it, and take it home. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the car that I've got for the weekend. It has got carbon fiber wing mirrors. It has got the carbon fiber front grille. And I'm gonna have to take this off as well. I'll remove that in a little bit. But it has got carbon everywhere and the interior is something dreams are made of. You open it up like this. We've got an Alcantara full steering wheel. We've also got the race bucket seats from Aston Martin with red piping to match the brake calipers. And inside we have got the facelifted 177 inspired centre console with a new sat nav screen and all sorts of bits and bobs that I'm gonna be exploring. And I just can't wait to get on the road in this car. I've never driven a Vantage before. The only Aston Martins that I've driven, the DBS and the Virage, which I drove a couple of weeks ago at Southern Sky Motors. So this is pretty much a direct rival to my Lamborghini Gallardo. Such a small chassis, such a small or short wheelbase with a massive engine inside. Even though this is rear wheel drive, um, it's still got the double plated single clutch automatic gearbox, the same as the Lamborghini. So big engine, small car, very similar to the Lamborghini and used V12 Vantage S's are around the same sort of price as my Lamborghini. Um, so let's see whether this car lives up to the Aston Martin name. I've got it all weekend. I'm gonna just <laughs> love every minute of it. So um, here we go. Let's jump inside this car and go for a drive. Right, I am now in the cockpit of the Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. Oh my God. This is the key, the glass Aston Martin key that I've been provided to slot in the middle Oh, 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 I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what's going on. The Aston Martin handbrake is a weird one. Oh, 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 oh. Alcantara steering wheel. One of my favourite things of all time. Of all time. So these are my first few miles in the V12 Vantage S. And like I said, 565 brake horsepower, five brake horsepower more than the Lamborghini. I'm just trying to edge out of the junction. This is so loud. There's a nice Audi S1 there. Super comfortable seats, as you would expect from Aston Martin. <laughs> and I can feel the gear changes working their way through. And I have to say, I can imagine that this on some country roads is an out and out hooner. There are a few modes that I'm gonna get myself familiar with before I start playing around with the car. I've been told that they are on winter, this car is on winter tires. So I'm gonna to have to be careful as to um, when I put my foot down and make sure that there is enough temperature in the tyres before I start having some fun because I can imagine this car from the rear is quite twitchy being rear wheel drive. But as I'm cruising around, 
not only is it one of the best places to sit, stunning, stunning interior, I've got some fantastic views in my wing mirrors as well. This is, this is wicked. <laughs> I feel like James Bond. Can I make this? Yeah. Oh, I don't really know what to say. I feel like a kid at Christmas. Thank God I have turned 25. This is a bit of a dream come true, I think. One button I want to press pretty much immediately is the S. It's not even S, I just looked at it, it's Sport. And there we go. Whoa! Okay, this is quick. I was expecting the throttle response to be similar to the Virage, which is definitely a GT car, completely forgetting that this is an out and out supercar with a 5.9 litre V12. <laughs> that throttle response was instant. And one thing that I wanted to try in this car was to work out where the torque delivery comes because the Vanquish and the Virage and the DB9, because they are GT cars, because they are built for the big comfy miles, all of the torque delivery is at the top end. So when you're cruising at low revs, you don't really get too much sort of surge forward, but in this car you do. <laughs> so as we're sat in the cockpit, of the Aston Martin. I'm just going to show you around a few features that this car has. Oh look, it's almost like a mirror. Woo! And this is the revised centre console taken out the 177 that also features in the brand new Aston Martin Vanquish. It is all sort of touchscreen, as you can see. Um, and then we've got some cool interesting buttons down here. We've got the suspension and we've also got traction control. I can't believe how much of a mirror this is. You put the glass key in like so with your foot on the brake and slide it straight in. Don't take your foot off the brake until that red light on neutral stops flashing. And then we come to the new satellite navigation music multimedia system. By the way, this isn't where I live, so. <laughs> um, and then you can control it all through, oh no, that's not working. You can control the phone, system settings, audio, navigation. It's a vehicle status, we've got a power meter which comes up. Track use only, refer to manual drive responsibly. Here you can see we've got power and torque within the middle, we've got the rev range. So if I rev it up, it tells how much power was using, how much torque was using. I think that is one of the coolest features of this car. Fast forwarding a couple of hours now, as you can see I've changed and I'm a bit more prepared for the day. And my first activity of the day is I'm gonna be turning up to an event. And I think most people when they turn up to an event or whatever it is, this isn't a car event, I'm turning up to a, a family event. An Aston Martin is the car that everyone dreams of turn, turning up to an event in. And today I'm lucky enough to have that opportunity and that experience of turning up to um, a pretty cool day. And my first impressions of the car, now that I've been behind the wheel of it for more than half an hour, is that this car is so different, yet pretty much exactly the same as my Lamborghini. And I know that doesn't make sense, but as the Lambo and the, v and the V12 Vantage, they both have massive engines in very small bodies. And the other similarity is these cars aren't particularly built for town or city driving. Small spaces, even though these are small cars, their single clutch gearbox isn't particularly built for stop start, slow gear changes. And when you buy a V12 Vantage S or when you buy a Gallardo, you never really think that you're gonna be in that environment. And most people never are. So it's a really invalid point as a negative on the car. But once you open this up and once you get onto some open roads, this car becomes an absolute animal and a real handful as well because it's rear wheel drive and 565 brake horsepower. It's um, definitely twitchy. Once you click that sport button, the car turns into a completely different beast. And it really has a split personality, like some of the other cars that I've driven, some of the high performance super sports cars. Once you press that sport button, it does become a supercar. But as soon as you take it off, it just becomes a nice, comfy cruiser GT car, which is really, really cool. The Virage did not have that. 
and I can, I can imagine that the big V12, the GT cars that Aston Martin offer, also don't really have the real nitty gritty supercar performance that this car has because it is a lot lower to the ground, it's a lot smaller, a lot lighter, but still has the flagship 5.9 litre V12 engine in. So, I think for the rest of this video, I'm gonna put it in sport mode and really enjoy this car as it's supposed to be done. Because the Lamborghini, as soon as you click it into Corsa, it's the best button in the car and it becomes just a real race track, race car for the road, not race track. Just becomes an out and out supercar that just gets your blood pumping. And this car in sport mode is exactly the same. It just becomes <laughs> V12 in good. Good morning and day two in the V12 Vantage S. The reason I didn't film yesterday's motorway cruise was that I wanted to get it under my belt without filming so that I could then relay some of the information having experienced this car on the motorway. Experience what it is like as a GT car and I have to say two things. It covers miles effortlessly. It is super comfortable in here. The suspension is definitely built more for the, for the motorway cruises. I haven't touched the uh, different suspension settings yet, but once you're in seventh gear and you're cruising along the motorway, it's a super comfortable place to be. The sound system in this and the way that you can connect, can connect your phone, listen to the digital radio, all sorts of entertainment is available through this screen, which it is a really, really comfortable and enjoyable place to be and spend a lot of time as well. Beautiful car. The one downside that I heard about this car is the fuel economy. And everyone knows that I love a good fuel economy challenge. In this car, it would be near impossible to do. It would be just, <laughs> it's non-existent. I've done 120 miles and I've done half a tank. And this is a 5.96 litre V12. I can imagine it's quite expensive to fill up as well. So, if I was gonna consider this car as my next car as a replacement to the Lamborghini, which I need a car that is not only gonna be comfortable on long journeys, but also have relatively good fuel economy. And the Lambo does that. The Lambo does that. It doesn't have the comfort, it doesn't have the entertainment, and it doesn't have the sort of fundamental 2015 slash 16 technologies that you get in cars these days. But it does have fuel economy, <laughs> this car doesn't. Once this car gets the new twin turbo engine from AMG and once it gets a double clutch gearbox it is going to be one of the coolest, one of the best cars on the road. Day three ladies and gentlemen and the final day with this absolute animal. I have learned to love this car and let me give you a quick background into how I have come to drive this car. Aston Martin Amersham have thankfully been able to let me drive this car all weekend. And it was because the plans, adventures, road trips that I have this year, unfortunately might require the Lamborghini to be replaced. To be replaced with something with similar performance, similar eye-catchingness, with an amazing soundtrack, but just a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more up to date with 2015-16 technology. And the Aston Martin V12 Vantage was one of those cars that I really thought could replace the Lamborghini for this year. And I'm gonna quickly rattle off a few of the amazing points that this car has, and two things that unfortunately let it down. As a car, this Aston Martin is incredible. It's got a fantastic interior, right from the new revised center console with touchscreen. It's got a new multimedia system, which is unbelievable. The ride, the way that this car just builds up the power, the surge of power from the naturally aspirated engine, it is incredible. Everything about this car is super, super special. The only two things that let it down are the single clutch gearbox, and that's only because cars with a double clutch gearbox are just much better to live with and much more usable. That's not saying that this is a bad gearbox, but I'm just saying double clutches are better. And the fuel economy on this car isn't as good as I was hoping. I did half a tank 
motorway driving 110 miles so I think the maximum you could probably get out of this tank being an 80 litre tank is about 300 to 350 miles which isn't good for these long road trips that I've got planned. I really really want to drive now the new Aston Martin Vanquish with the new ZF gearbox because I do think this car with a double clutch gearbox with a twin turbo AMG engine that just gets better fuel economy this will be one of the best cars out there that not only Aston Martin are able to offer but I just think as a package it will just be unbeatable oh second gear traction oh, ho, 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 ho. So I met him back there quickly <laughs> and I have to say what an amazing weekend this has been I just feel so lucky to be in a position where I have the opportunity of driving this car and filming my experiences in. and hopefully you've enjoyed this video I love this car the Aston Martin brand will always be one of my favorite car brands and I just think they've got a little bit of tweaking to do and then this their whole range of cars is going to be amazing so with that being said, I'd just like to say thank you for watching, thank you for supporting Supercars of London. Make sure you click the link below of Aston Martin, Stratstone, Amazon for all of the cars that they've got in their stock, but also their location because they're not really far from where I live. Very, very local to me actually, so make sure you do that. Thank you for watching, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and give it a big thumbs up for the V12 in this beast. Cheers guys, I'll see you soon. Now, back over to the left, break hard, break hard, break hard, break hard. Tight right. don't, don't be picking up the throttle too early because that's why we're running wide now. Yeah. And why we're not flying because you picked up the throttle too early. So we'll turn it in, that's it. Okay, braking. Keep it up wide, keep it up wide.